Good morning, fellow Ambazonians. Shalom. Today, na Sunday, a day way for Ambazonia, people that they go for church, for go worship God, na a day way picking that they dress well, all man they look fine, for take a moment, for take a break from farm work and other works of life, for enter for church them for morning time. Today, na the day way for Mushasha morning time, while mommy them for Catholic church, they they prepare them go church for morning prayer. Those them for Presbyterian church as well, for Baptist church, and all the new churches the way that I emerge for our land that they go for take time, for pay tributes to God. A reminder of who we are, upright people. My name na Capo Daniel, una own countryman, sense past king, Mr. No Kony, una welcome to our daily podcast, a program or the endeavor for bring una truth facts, meaningful information, so that it will help we as we work out for this journey to our independence. We are also a journey of emancipation from slavery and from oppression from the Cameroon French government. Una welcome. I bring una salute from ground zero, from all of our network, community leaders, civil society, and the grassroots of Ambazonians. Today, we go start with some big meeting where it take place for inside Abuja within the Nigerian government where some senator them and state representative with community leader them for a region for Nigeria where they call an Belegete community in a region where we border our border with uh, Ambazonia for the site for, for, for one of the cross river states them. They want a very significant meeting where our people then need to take note of and we will try to reach out to these same individuals and also the T- Tinobo's government for put the story for Ambazonia their side, make our own perspective it be reflected in their consideration. It and they make almost one week with some incident. If it happen, I think almost two weeks, if I don't make mistake, it's an incident. If it happened for the 5th of December, Nothing we done day for a table, but we never already get proper information for be able for 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 explain and for our people then because if it happen we'll be here I'm like like uh Naromo will not get any specific network within this community for find out exactly which way it happen. So all information while they provide them make gonna know information will be general and over yet verify them. But the Nigerian National Assembly members them that I meet up with the Nigerian president on Friday. According to that meeting, Ambazonian fighter them, they be attacked this community, but they be done previously attacked this community. So we'll be sure say the story it be true and a very thing for a big thing for take them seriously. They attacked the Belete Belegete community. And during that attack, then carry some people them for they then go them into captivity and they really demand money. They don't hold the hostage them for some long time these hostages including some very important people them from cross river state for be more specific this incident will be happened now for around obudu mountain resort so that people then feel verify the information and people they waiting day for day if you not listen for this podcast make una reach out for we for help we as we could try for approach those authorities that will be involved this locality will be located about 400 kilometers north of the nigerian city port of Calabar. The community then be under a lot of conflict with our forces them and the community then they those communities then also get tribal issue them as we be done know from the previous incident where be happened where they be get attack against Ambazonian fighters and then they also be get a retaliatory attack during that particular area. Among the people then we the alleged Ambazonian fighter them then carry them from that community, then they be over thirty people them where they be adopted, including the chief, where they, they call her now, Owoshi Francis, and then uh, the clan head for the, and he also be the clan head for the Beligate clan, where they, they stay for that area, and a very uh, long, uh, very historic area for the Nigerian border areas, um, now one of the oldest villages um, for that particular area. So it's a very disturbing meeting where that happened for Nigeria, they, they seek the intervention of the federal government. Since Tinobo, it began to take power, the relationship with the Cameroon government it began to deteriorate because Paul Bia a relationship it will be strong now with the former president 
we be the Buhari, we be the for Nigeria. Since this new president come, the Nigerian federal troops that don't withdraw from border regions, they need to carry out the regular patrol and security we don't be left for the state authority them. We only benefit now we and Bazunia. This meeting, they the call for the Nigerian federal government for react and for send troops them for continue back the patrol where they be get them from the federal state and the sponsor where they be get them for security apparatus them. We will continue to monitor the situation, verify every information and try to reach out for the community as well, while urgently reaching out to the lawmakers that are involved to try to assist them to resolve this matter. As today on Sunday, one of the briefings we are going to talk for Nana about uprightness, an upright person. The country, Burkina Faso, it translates to an upright person. Now the country will be home for the African hero and legend, Thomas Sankara, one of the best leaders in the way rule over Africa, where they be bring ingenuity, they be bring value for their country where they last for generation, and today they get the coup d'etat where the military it down remove a dictator, they replace them with an upright person where they restore the soul and conscience of that nation, an upright person, a person we should all look for. Every country that has an upright leader, the Americans have Abraham Lincoln, who stood up and fought against slavery. He said that all men were born equal. That status have built a nation that have lasted for centuries and dominated the war. We had Patrick Lumumba from the Congo, who was also killed, one of the best African leaders, who was an upright person. We have Kwame Nkrumah. We have big heroes in Africa as well. Nelson Mandela. A hero, a young man who fought and was ready to fight and die for his country before he was arrested. He was labeled a terrorist by the South African apartheid government and recognized as such by many other governments based on a criminal trial that lacked evidence against him. Fellow Ambazonians, an upright man, a righteous and a just man. One of our activists who is an upright man who is currently in prison is brother Abdul Karim. Abdul Karim Wright, a terrorist, is a badge of honor to those who are fighting for freedom. And we, brow- we proudly hold it in our heart. And that is a level the Cameroon government have given to all Ambazonians, freedom fighters, activists and leaders. Terrorists. Terrorists is the worst name that can be given to a person. But it's a badge of honor. Even Jesus Christ was cri- was criminally convicted and crucified as a criminal, hung among criminals. The cross that was meant to destroy him, spoil his image, and sabotage his work was a badge of honor that is hung today in all churches across the globe. Terrorism. Terrorism is a badge of honor to those who are honorable, those who are disciplined, and those who are upright. But it is a badge of condemnation to those who are terrorists, those who kill innocent individuals, uses terrorism, force, to intimidate, subdue a population or innocent people for political reasons. No matter who do it, no matter the justification, terrorism itself is real and is terrorism. We have seen the Cameroon government and their predecessor during the time of the Makazi using outright terrorism to terrorize and suppress the Basa and the Bameleke people who were waging a war for freedom, chopping off head, carrying out public execution to intimidate and silence the entire population into silence. That terrorism succeeded when the leaders of the UPC, Um Umyobe, was killed and NS Wani publicly executed in front of children women in Bafusam to traumatize the population with the images of the heads of fighters chopped off and hung in market squares. The entire Bameleke and Basa resistance died. Their populations were turned into Sardinas from that day till today. They are unable to rise up to raise their head against a terrorist regime and a terrorist military of La Republic to Cameroon. Today, Ambazonians should not be terrorists. We should not intimidate our own population. In several incidents, I have told our soldiers and banned them and forbid them 
from warning families that have been kidnapped or families that have gone through excesses with our soldiers. Any camp, any Ambazonian leader who tells somebody, do not talk about what has happened to you, is not different from a terrorist. Throughout my activism in the Ambazonian struggle, I have been shocked with the amount of fear I have seen in the eyes of our civilians who have encountered the Cameroon military. I have watched parents, daughters, uncles and aunties afraid to cry the death of their loved ones or even to report the death of their loved ones who were butchered and killed by the Cameroon army in their homes, in the comfort of their homes, some in their farms. The horror in their eyes haunt me for the rest of my life and give me restless night. And those are the fuel that fuels my podcast and many things I do to free our people from fear. Ambazonians should never, ever use the evil of fear against our own. When they call us terrorists, we should do so, they should do so knowing that we are free. And we should be able to look at the mirror and say we are not terrorists. We do not terrorize our own people. Anybody who is a terrorist who terrorizes his own people, when there are evidence that you are a terrorist, you are indeed an evil person. Ambazonian should be upright. An upright man is the one who walks by rule and, be, and is careful and exactly his and exert his ex endeavors to live up to rules in a much better way. Thus, the upright man is one who walks by rule and is careful to exert his endeavors to live up to the rule. In the whole of his duty, which he owes to God and man, his character trait is that would uphold his rules of dignity. The upright man, Ambazonians, should be upright. We should serve a purpose bigger than us, a rule, a document, an ethics, a memo or memorandum of understanding that clearly defines the rule of our community, what can be done, what cannot be done, what is acceptable, what is not acceptable. We must all hold ourselves to certain standards, certain rule and certain expectation. We cannot be swinging from left to right from this principle. Whatever our conduct should do, should be expressed, should always reflect who we are. Who can we be defined as? Fellow Ambazonian, let's live up to expectation. Let's live up to basic rules. For these are the principles that guides the world and guides upright nations to freedom. God bless you all. Have a wonderful day. Capo Daniel signing off.